<sighs> All right. If you haven't already, watch my previous video on the subject. And if you have, let's make this quick. The year is 2011, and Media Molecule, the eager development team behind the successful Little Big Planet series, was in the midst of receiving numerous accolades. Whether it be praise from greats like Shuei Yoshida, or in the physical form of many compliments, they were finally getting the attention they worked so hard for. Six months after the success of Little Big Planet 2, they decided to announce that Media Molecule were stepping away from the Little Big Planet series in order to focus on new game ideas. Alex Evans in particular stating, we're no longer a one-threaded company. That's really difficult for us, but we're doing it to keep it fresh. Once a language is established, that's the time to evolve and develop. Everybody speaks that language. The design, style, and criteria of what works and what doesn't is much more established now, and it's time to expand. Nonetheless, MM later stated that they will always be involved in LBP to some degree, and this would come into fruition through side projects such as continued DLCs, or the spin-off game, LBP Karting. When asked to develop LBP 3 by Sony, their hands were full at the time, so it was passed off to Sumo Digital, a company older than them and by just three years who started from very humble beginnings. And we know how that went. During August 2012, Media Molecule had about 40 employees, 15 of them working on Tearaway, and everyone else working on something little more adventurous. Six years later, here we are with the finished product. Now that that's out of the way, um, let me read you the script really quick. Dreams is a game creation system allowing players to create and share their own levels similar to that of Little Big Planet. That statement you heard is the fattest fucking understatement conceived by man. Dreams is such a good game. It really is. The amount of time spent on this game, while it is reserved at times, is very self-evident. The character design, the UI, the load times, the art style, the graphical capabilities, all available on the later half of the PS4 releases, mind you, work like a charm. Every aspect of Dreams is detailed, yet some pieces of content are a bit hard to get into or understand, and that's okay with me personally. If anything, it shows the possible longevity of the game. In other words, it's a positive for them. The fact that they went from a company pumping out a game every two to three years to spending four million dollars in research and development and seven years to release one game is a very brave move that most game companies today probably couldn't risk. Ironically enough, it was the best move for them to make at the time. There's that really important story of you and like the Commodore 64 and like how important that was. Yeah, yeah, you sure. know, I've just... No, yeah, just that basic thing of you know, back in the 80s, in the old days. Sort of gaming was basically on the home computers. You had the Commodore 64 and the Spectrum. They might have to go and Google that to see what that is. But, um, but the point is it was a computer with a keyboard and you could buy games for it, but you could also program. You could make things on it straight away. And then when the consoles became the sort of more prominent thing, it was great. I got my PlayStation 1, but I was like, how do I make a game for this? You know, it suddenly felt like this thing that had been locked off from me. Yeah, that's just not good enough. Dreams makes it very easy to get distracted. With bright, flashy platformers to genuine horror games, Dreams does its best to make sure you do not get bored. There are a multitude of categories featuring easily accessible games, mini game jams hosted by MM themselves, interactive advertisement levels, meticulously crafted artistic sculptures, pieces of music that can be produced through the end game bare bones digital audio workstation, simply because they fucking can. And with VR, it adds a whole new layer of playability. Visual arts, games, creation in general, all these simply bloom from this perspective. These previously discussed details were so apparent to me to the point where I played Dreams for damn near a week straight, and that was only spent enjoying the numerous amount of player-created games. I didn't even make a damn thing. What the fuck? This game was made for people who want to explore creativity in a couch-based way, instead of the usual game creation route, and I've heavily indulged every minute of it. And if anything, I only regret it a little. Not because it dreams itself, but... <laughs> the usual poison. As expected, the Dreams community isn't too different from the LBP series, but it does have a fresh new paint job for the most part. The internal community of Dreams is severely interactive, the rating system is more complex. If you wanted to, you can take simple elements of levels and items and remix them by messing with the logic and aspects of the object for others and yourself to use. Every now and then, MM hosts these aforementioned game jams for the community that anyone can join regardless of skill. 
Medium Molecule gives these levels more of a spotlight with the various amounts of highlight categories. And with the addition of the Auto Surf feature, the devs want to make sure no rock is left unturned whenever it comes to level discovery and production, which seemed to be a massive unspoken issue when it came to the LPP series. The skeptical energy around levels under 500 plays or hearts was way too polarizing for people who just wanted to play a simple level, leaving only a select handful of dependable levels or creators if you were lucky to find them in the gargantuan sea of... I made this by the way. During the release month of the game, I developed a bit of a pet peeve, the attention the more joking levels and the spectacle that they were for Let's Players, the hardest working community on YouTube. One of the more prominent people being Donkey. Yoshi dies. Okay, I'll play this. It may have taken the better part of a decade to make, but the arrival of dreams feels significant. It represents a whole new way for people to make things and share them with the world. Mini Malco has made a suite of tools that feel intuitive to use, but more than that, it's built a social platform. That being said, Number one, I understand that most of them in of itself are joking about the capabilities of the game, okay? I'm not going to make a two hour video about how my opposing opinion is the correct one. And two, Dreams especially, as great as it is, needs these bad levels because Dreams treads a very fine line in the creative process pit, which I'll talk about in a bit. But I can't help but feel bad given the amount of effort people make in Dreams to really make something unique, detailed, and truly amazing. Although MM has done a very good job of putting the diamonds in the rough on display, a lot of the hard ongoing work done by most developers can be looked into further by external communities on social media. Using the correct hashtag on Twitter and the subreddit r slash dreams showcases these talented and experimental individuals and what items they made, what logic or art they're working on, what shortcuts they found in logical tools, and many more things. This in turn helps the community to the highest degree, and I immensely recommend you check it out if you need further convincing to buy the goddamn game. Overall, compared to LBP, Dreams is more community oriented and is made up of a tight-knit crowd of aspiring designers. But the question is, how do you become one? In the death of LBP, I had such a huge issue with the ability gap that widened throughout the series. To reiterate, when you play the first couple of levels of LBP 1, the capability of recreation or imitation is easy. Due to the very level design of LBP being free but contained or limited. And LBP 2, although the game became more complex with gadgets and logic, it was still very easy to replicate due to the game being able to handle the tools given to the player and the extent the tools can be used by said player. Unfortunately, in LBP 3, the streak was broken, not only by the bloated amount of logic that was added, but the centimeter of plywood Sumo Digital expected the logic to exist on for the player. Sumo Digital could do whatever they wished, the player could not, there were limitations. Although this sounds like normal logic for any game, this should not be the case for non-linear games or games that literally tell you to create your heart's content. Imagine if No Man's Sky, Minecraft, or even Super Mario Maker allowed you to create as usual, but you can only use five tools before the program shits the bed and corrupts all your hard work. That was and still is the state of LBP3. With Dreams being a very vast game, it would have to have a damn good story. Here's the thing, in a technical sense, it doesn't have one. That's right, Dreams doesn't even come with a story mode. I want you to understand, this is a very dangerous maneuver in of itself. With the removal of something so integral to the game, you're practically removing 85% of not only your game, but the replayability. And unless you're going to add a lot, and I mean a lot, to blur the lines and make the game seem fuller than it is, the ship is going to sink. There's only so much you could put in the holes before you weigh it down. That being said, in place of that, Media Molecule decides to grab your attention before you even consider playing an online level by telling you they made a level to give a glimpse of what's possible in dreams. And holy shit, is it an example? Arch Stream is a very emotionally detailed experience. At some points, it doesn't even feel like a game, just more of a movie. You play as a guy named Art, a double bass player who finds himself in a depressing mood after leaving his band. And as the player, you go through a whole lot to get him back with them. With a storyline that's simple in concept, the gameplay you're seeing doesn't really do the level justice. It is very entertaining, however. You're going from a platformer to a point of click on the fly. You get to see detailed scenery and designs. You get to hear a kid's character say the shit word. Searching for stupid shit. 
If you for some reason don't like the idea of online video games, you strange demon of the self, I wouldn't be disappointed if you bought the game solely just to play Artstream, because this level alone is worth its weight. Now, as amazing as it is, the question is, how hard is it for players to replicate? And to that I say, how much time do you have? There is a plethora of tutorials as usual with any MM game. But the ones on Dreams are a hell of a lot more interactive, which is expected considering how much more complexity MM gives to the player to play with. Instead of them just telling you how to use it, giving you the item and kicking you to the curb, Dreams Tutorials gives you these tools, teaches you little details about them, and has you practice with them in levels. And as tedious as it sounds, it's much better than the former method. There is literally a tutorial for everything. You pretty much get the basic principles of animation, 3D art, level design, music sequencing, tech, motherfucking how to get your wife back. My only gripe about the tutorial tutorials is the media player that they teach you through. If the shit had easier controls, you'd be able to finish the levels in half the time it will usually take. And once again, this is where the community comes in. If you find yourself having trouble with the in-game tutorials for whatever reason, there are more in-depth videos on YouTube going through even more advanced stuff. Animation basics, rigging, character design, texture techniques, dad tracking, AI programming. Simply put, it's great. The system is much more memorable and you don't have to look like an inept infant whenever it comes to remembering specifics of certain items. Okay, so uh, listen, this video was supposed to be out two years ago, but as you may know, a lot has occurred to the point where I couldn't dedicate time to write about kids games. But thankfully, it has helped me test one thing I couldn't buy the day one release, and that is longevity. Over the last two years, Dreams has been through a lot, whether it be the inclusion of community events like the MP Awards, where creators can be praised and rewarded with these cool little trophies for what they've done in the community, or the expansion of other big projects that are still in development as we speak. One thing I forgot to mention was the implementation of the video evaluation. The application process allowing creators to use the concept art, music, short films, and other projects for actual business purposes outside of the game itself. This application essentially allows the player to use Dreams as sort of a pseudo engine for outside purposes. In turn, you do have to keep MM up to date with the project, not include other licensed property in the project itself, and some other terms and conditions, although vaguer than some priors. This is an entrance for being able to make money through external means, like producing an album off of Dreams and exporting it to Spotify, or painting something that can be used as a design on Redbubble, or making a fully fledged animated show all in Dreams. Although this all sounds like wishful thinking, it has been successfully accomplished, so what's stopping the average player? If anything, this makes Dreams a fantastic start for people who want to get into these specific fields. Even without the beta evaluation, MM has established that you own the IP for whatever you create, meaning that this can lead to other ventures if the popularity warrants it. Art and sculpting commissions are a prominent thing for some artists to take part of as well. YouTube is also another valid way to make money if you're willing to put that tremendous amount of effort forth. Take for example Elka Gaming, someone who decided to make an avatar fan game. After uploading several time lapses of the game development, the views were substantial enough for him to quit his day job and put all his effort towards creating in Dreams. Unfortunately, as you can expect, Dreams has also seen a stagnant decline in player base, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but there are a number of reasons for it. What is Dreams? Is a sketchbook. Honestly though, are you guys just trying to sell people a game engine? A game engine with a game. You know that just photo mode alone like stresses a lot of people out, right? But then you look at what they do with Spider-Man and you think, well, if that's what they can do with Spider-Man, what can they do with- Dreams being the game that it is relies on the hard work of the community for the gameplay loop to properly function. There's only so much Media Molecule can create to entertain the tens of thousands of players actively waiting for content, as well as develop new creation tools. This will lead to players creating their own levels and providing more content for everyone, whether it just be to play or just to customize the given content. This, however, in of itself, lasts only for so long. People put in hundreds or thousands of hours in the games that require them to actively think and strategize and research. This game is basically that, but for creatives. This doesn't feel much different than RuneScape or League of Legends in terms of time slash effort cost, but Dreams will probably train up a more useful skill set. Then again, most people don't come to games for that purpose. In the prior Media Molecule games, making levels was easy, but making a good level only required a better understanding of how to mix in the end game logic with fun. 
With dreams, however, there are so many varying elements and projects you can make to the point where it blurs the line from a video game to a bare bones design engine. And with that, a lot of players find themselves bringing in the question, is it worth it? Is it worth spending all this time creating logic, implementing an art style, putting effort into designing the level structure and player UI and everything else just for it to be a playable level on dreams? For some people like me, yes, creating at one's leisure and having the reward be people playing the finished creation is all there is to it. However, some people rather say, No, nigga. No. I rather enjoy everything that I can reach and ponder about, and if we run out of shit to play, oh well, I'm not creating a damn thing. Believe it or not, the second perspective is the most common. While doing research for this video, I found a lot of people on Reddit making some valid points about the gameplay loop. My biggest issue with dreams is that I can spend all day making something and think to myself, why am I not just making this on a PC? Truth is, the average gamer would never have any interest in dreams. It's way too complex and time consuming to hold the attention span of most people who play video games. That's why you really only see a few good creations. It was a really neat concept, but something obviously never clicked. I know there are loads of fun games in there, but every time I surf, I get about one half no playable slash tech graphic demos and one half silly games with characters from someone's favorite IP, but very little real gameplay. Without incentive to create, many people would rather create a game outside of dreams and get paid rather than wasting hundreds of hours in dreams. Not to sugarcoat, but it's dead. It was a total missed opportunity by Sony. You probably get the idea. Yes, making money is an option, but the average player probably wouldn't want to put forth the hours of effort. Almost every game is more of a proof of concept rather than a full-fledged game, and majority of projects that were popular months after the game's release are still at the top of their respective genres, and are as easy as to find like a YouTube soy face thumbnail in the middle of a shallow haystack, at least on the dream surfing main menu. Making these fleshed out games takes time, coordination, and droves of effort, which a lot of players are not prepared or planning to do, which leads to the creation of these bad levels. And due to the game not having much promotion outside of the empty promises of doing so by Sony, makes the gameplay of these levels by bigger influencers seem like the only thing inhabiting dreams. And in turn, it eventually became true, with levels like these being made in insane quantities. There's also a notable lack of features that were prevalent in previous MM games, like in-game purchases and file corruption. But online multiplayer seems to be the most desirable. In all honesty, it didn't initially strike me how the game felt semi-empty because of that. Even with all the creativity teaming from level to level, Dreams still feels like a lone single person event. It sort of makes all these creations, creators, and players feel like cogs in the machine that is Dreams. Enjoying the product it produces but being denied access to sharing with others, which in retrospect, would make the other games feel just as desolate. And while we're here, Dreams is unironically competition for Roblox. Yes, the goofy kids game that uses these said kids for workshop pay to create stuff that makes the big bucks for the bigger men. What am I talking about? Who wrote this in the script? Roblox creators, other than making the worst things known to man, have been actually working very hard on creating scenes, games, and logic that can and will make notable levels on the platform. This is mainly due to it taking the complete opposite approach that Dreams did. Roblox is a cross-platform free game with multiplayer, an in-game purchases that allows the player to create whatever the hell they want. Dreams is a PlayStation exclusive $40 single player experience. Even if they wanted to go free, there is no monetization. Even if they went cross-platform, no one is paying $40 just to play a creative game to share absolutely none of the journey to any degree. Porting the game to a more viable platform like Steam or on PC, although plausible, will take as long as it has with games like God of War or Bloodborne. The community as a whole seems torn into two perspectives, complaining about these previously mentioned thorns and not stopping until something is done about them, or creating and enjoying what they can from the community. Eventually, the average player can find themselves on either side. There's not much wrong with dreams, but the few issues the game does have is clearly detrimental to the game's health. On September 3rd, 2020, one of the initial founding four, Alex Evans retired, stating, Hey, so a few months ago, I did a bit of a lockdown inspired soul searching and decided to step down from Dreams Dev to Dreams Fan. Take a break from Game Dev, a career I've been lucky enough to enjoy since I was a spotty 15 year old. 
Trames would then go on to win several awards, but I found it interesting that they only recognized it for the technical marvel that it is. It is a logical masterpiece, but the lack of variation in awards can be seen as another signal showing that the game is advanced but lacking in certain areas, but maybe that's just me. There is a lot that can be said about this game, but it simply cannot be called bad. It is flawed in multiple degrees, but adjustable ones. And as barren as it may seem sometimes, the community still has a heavy pulse. MM is a wonderful place. I can't imagine making games anywhere else, but I wondered what else an old fart like me could do in this world. I've been in the game dev bubble for so long, I'm not sure what's next or what's even out there for someone like me. Overall, Dreams is a really good game. Personally, while I am a bit disappointed to see it in the state that it is now, I can't help but feel a bit hopeful. If more people knew about this game, there would be better creations, but I can't really complain about what we got now. If multiplayer was an active and functioning feature, the game would flourish, maybe even surpassing the famous Sackboy. The game can be fixed. Whether it's fixed now or later is completely up to Media Molecule. Seeing how they at least try with events and promotion of interesting levels, it's not like they gave up at any point. They're just visibly working at the aspects that do need work. Maybe they do know better in the sense that fleshing out the base community as it is, is the way to go. Maybe the game's long overdue press run is around the corner. Maybe some unexpected plans and even bigger updates are on the way. For anyone worrying about dreams, don't. What MM are doing on dreams at the moment is going to blow your minds, and though I miss them all, I'll be cheering them from the sidelines. Thanks to them for the first 13 wonderful years, and here's to MM's next 13. Whatever it is, I personally hope it happens soon. Um. This is how I think it ranks compared to the other games, and yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time when I find out whatever the fuck I'm going to upload. Jesus, man, do you know how much of a fucking quality difference there's gonna be for the next year? God fucking damn. Hey, Grover, catch!